Welcome back. In this video, we just continue where we stopped in the previous one and I will talk about export transparent raster images and also how to export large raster images that you can also see on your display, on your screen, computer screen, um, that can be used for high quality prints. In the last video, we stopped with this code. As you remember, we learned how to um, basically export with the timestamp uh, images and we encountered two problems. One problem was that the image that we save, even we use a PNG file type, it simply doesn't save the transparent background. That also includes if I also turn off the background here in the draw, because by default processing always has a background. And the second issue was that if we use a very large um, raster image, for example, in this case, 3,508 pixels, which equals to about 30 centimeter width and height at 300 PPI. We basically can see it here, but the image is too large to see on the screen. So we'd like to now solve these two issues. And before we do this, let's have a look why processing doesn't save images with transparency. I'm just right now in Photoshop and if I open, if I make a new window, for example, our size that we have in sketch in the processing. So you can see we have this little uh, window size and what is happening now when we draw in processing, for example, here like circles, processing is making those circles all over the place now in this case, randomly. And what it does, it puts everything on one layer on the background layer, basically, just the same as it is in Photoshop. And in order to separate it from the background, we need to create a second layer. And you can see this here. So I'm just adding another layer, the background, I make it white again. And now I can draw on this layer and I have all the circles again. And what we need to save is only layer one. And how to do this? We can use P graphics. If you go on the processing website and you go to the references and then you also click on P graphics, you will find uh, more explanations about this. And it's a kind of a very simple um, class that helps us to create a rendering context. As it says here, Use this class if you need to draw into an off-screen graphics buffer. So basically we create with this an additional layer. A P graphics object can be constructed with create graphics function. The begin draw and end draw methods are necessary to set up the buffer and to finalize it. So we need those three things. Okay, so let's just write a very short code. Um, something similar that we just did in, the, in, in Photoshop and try to save the image with a transparent background. So we had before something more like red and we use an ellipse with random X values, Oop, no, one time, random X values and random height values at perhaps the size of 25 pixels each. Now let's have a look, it should work. There you go. So we have already now this image, uh, generative image. And if I say press S, it saves it. It shows us also the feedback on the bottom left. Let's have a look how it looks like here. There you go. And we already got here two images that I saved, but you can see it doesn't have any transparency. It saves the background by default that is gray because we didn't assign any uh, color to the background. If it's transparent, it should be basically this blue here, bluish color on the sides. Okay. Now, to, in order to save it as transparent, we need to create a new layer. And we know already, so P graphics, uh, graphics can help us and we call it IMG, yeah? P graphics IMG, or we can also say actually PG if you want. Some people do PG, so it's okay. Let's do PG, uh, no, IMG. I have my own uh, ways and then like basically we have to also say this new context, we need to give it a size because right now it doesn't have any size. So we say create graphics and then 
we need to give it an x direction and y direction just like the same as we do with the void setup we give it a size so we can just say use the same width and height from the window from the size uh, from the setup okay so this is there there it is now we start nothing has changed because we need to assign the attributes of the drawing and the the element the object ellipse also into the into this new context otherwise it doesn't work yeah otherwise processing doesn't know that actually we want to draw the ellipse into this new class of p graphics and before we can do this so don't forget we need to also say where it should begin to draw and where it should end draw because otherwise there will be an error and not only that but of course we also say what should be what should begin to draw and what should end draw now let's have a look okay the sketch is working everything is okay just simply there is nothing visible and the reason for that is that everything that we draw right now is put into the buffer something that is not visible right now on our screen and in order to show it we need to turn it on or or tell processing please show us img and place img at the coordinate 0.0, .0 top left corner always of the screen and now if i press again run there it is so now with a few steps we created another layer on top of our um, default layer the background layer where we were usually drawing inside so this layer we can save and it should keep the transparency to do that before we can do this so we have to also say img save yeah because otherwise processing doesn't know what do you want to save do you want to save just the window the default window on the bottom or do you want to save the image layer now let's run it again and i press s i save the file let's open up and check and you can see already there is a difference here this was what we saved before with the gray background by default and here on the right side we have already transparency okay so that works perfect now how do we export large raster images that we also can see at the same time on our window to do that we continue working on the same sketch and we will also use p graphics so we keep this layer in the context uh, we keep this context new context however we would like to use these new sizes and if you put if you just turn it on for example the new size the window of course becomes much larger 3508 pixels by 3508 pixels and the drawing also um, is not visible so that's a problem so what we can do is first we want to keep the size of the window at 842 and at the same time we would like to use this new sizes you can always put it here inside manually or i prefer usually to write uh, to use variables to do that for the height and also for the uh, for the width and for the height okay all right w and h all right let's run it what happens is not much has changed we still have the very large uh, class of image or this new context of 3508 pixel and processing is displaying us the window at a smaller scale and also continues drawing it one problem here we have is or two problems we have first uh, we need to make sure that the width of it that we use for example here in the uh, for the random values has to be from the img class yeah because if we don't do this we just only say height it will reference this value if we say img dot width then it will take this value or respectively this value so we have to do the same here take the image height uh, take the height from the image or img all right let's run it now what happens it's the script or the code is now much slower you can see because the the window that it draws into is much larger or the layer and in order to display the same layer 
we can do this in the image with the image function. If we don't add anything additional here, the image function will display the image in the real scale. So basically scale 1.0. It doesn't resize the image layer. So what we can do is if we add in behind it, we can say scale it down to this window. And since both of them are square, we have no problems with any aspect ratio. So I just say scale it down to the size of the display window. And now let's have a look. There you go. As you can see already, the little the circles 25 pixels appear on our screen much smaller. But in real size, they are 25. So I save now this image. It says saved. Good. Let's open up and check it. Now we can see already here we have those two different images. One was at 842 pixels that we saved before and the other one is at 3508 pixels. And you can see if I zoom in we have exactly the same type, the same size of ellipses, just at a different size of the canvas if you want so. All right. Okay, so this is how it works. Um, if you want to save images with transparency, you need to use P graphics. And if you want to um, export or save raster images that are beyond your screen display, the size of the screen display, and at the, but you at the same time would like to see it on your screen what you are drawing, especially when it's generative art, then you can also use um, P graphics and then just simply scale it down the image when you call it back. One last, one last thing that I'd like to mention is when you work with P graphics, so here for example, and you want to save frames, each frames of it, it will not work. P graphics, P graphics does not work with save frame. Remember that. So if there is any, any issue, you have and it's not just not working that's simply because it cannot save the frames from the p graphics you have to always use save yeah and it's also unlikely that you will do videos with p graphics okay i think that's enough for this video it was rather very short compared to the previous one the next video will be how to export vector images pdfs and svgs so thanks for watching and if you have any questions, please write down in the comments and I will try to reply to them or perhaps you have also some suggestions, perhaps better suggestions, but I think that's enough to start with it and I'll see you now in the next video.